constructivism, a multidisciplinary approach. Constructivism in second language acquisition. It refers to the content-oriented, holistic language experience and usually takes place is in a bilingual class or project instruction. Constructivism is a holistic approach that is used in schools most especially in teaching. Through language, student-centered learning is a way constructivism, a multidisciplinary approach, is utilized. In second language acquisition, constructivism is a way so that teachers will produce project-based instruction in order for the students to follow it. Constructivism Construction is based on experiences of the learner. The goal of constructivism is not to memorize and regurgitate information. Constructivism in teaching Invents our own concepts and ideas links to what we are already know. Knowledge is constructed by the learners through an active and mental processes of development. In constructivism, experience is a tool. Student must acquire knowledge through inquiry, research, and their own investigation. As they construct their knowledge, they enhance their ability to think critically and analyze information. On this case, multidisciplinary approach is seen because students will work on their own. They'll, this will teach them how to become dependent. On the other hand, constructivism in teaching is important to understand how teachers can apply constructivism inside their classroom to create a unique learning environment for students. Teachers are more viewed as facilitators of learning. Teachers are the guiding tool so that students will gain knowledge. The Constructivist Classroom The hallmark of a constructivist classroom is the use of active techniques of learning. This may sound ambiguous, but if you delve deeper, the subtext becomes clearer. Students learn through experiments, solving real problems, reflection, and discussion. The students are encouraged to ask questions, discuss, and then reflect. They will not only learn new things, but also how to learn. Constructivist classroom requires an active participation of both teachers and students. Teachers pro provide lesson for the day and activities is a scaling tool to measure students' learnings. Giving reflection time using oral recitation, interviews using personal communication and written exams or essays are encouraged as a medium to know if students really gain enough knowledge about the lessons. Constructivist Classroom Guiding Principle Number 1. New learning builds on prior knowledge. Both schools of constructivism believe that new learning is built on prior knowledge. There are two contexts that will elaborate how prior knowledge would help constructivist classroom to become participative. Found contents in new learning builds on prior knowledge. The first one is learning and action-orientedness. One of the most important principles in constructivist approach to language teaching is action-orientedness. Cooperative learning such as pair work, group work, creative and active participation in classroom activities, learning by preparing various projects as well as learning by teaching are treated as an action-orientedness. It prepares not just the teacher but also the students to know how will they work on that specific day. Second one is learning and individualization. According to Dieter Wolf, a German researcher claims that learning can only be influenced by teaching in a very restricted way. It is the learner who is allowed to decide about the fragments and sections of material provided by the teacher during the lesson. This possibility to make choices to foster learners' autonomy, thus considering their prefer preferable style and type of learning. This allows the students to work on their current knowledge. The self-dependency or the individuality of the students must move and learning by doing is an effective way to really learn how a thing works. The second guiding principle is learning is mediated through social interaction. Both culture and language play a part on how students learn. The Cock, Sledgers, and Voten suggest that the language is individually constructed. It is mediated through social interaction and cultural context. 
This guiding principle talks on how students acquire knowledge from social interaction. It is an approach because it allows students to reflect on what they have gained and could be a potential way to change their perspective on a certain thing. The third guiding principle is learning and problem solving. Acquiring the second language is more effective. An authentic and complex learning environment or situation, consequently project instruction is a viable medium. Problems are everywhere and students must know how to deal with it. Seeking solutions to solve something is an effective way so that constructivist classroom could be called as an active and participative. This allows students to train them in problem solving just in case if they have. Last guiding principle is language practices. Language learners who are already literate at the appropriate developmental level in language 1, the native language serves as a springboard to literacy in language 2. These students already understand letter-sound relationships. They understand that meanings comes from the printed page and must be negotiated with the knowledge of the reader. They have already developed meanings and strategies that transfer over to literacy in L2. Building a quality communication using bilingualism could open for more communicators. Reading makes everyone literate in a specific language and could be utilized in communication. Constructivist Learning Constructivist learning is based on the idea that learners should have an active role in classrooms problem solving. Constructivists focused on the instrumental and practical function of theory and knowledge. They need to be trained as critical thinkers in the way that they have an active role in finding the relevancy between what they have learned and what they know. Constructions are located in the minds of individuals and not outside in the objects. The following are some crucial points in constructivism. Learning is an active process in which the learner uses input and construct meaning out of it. Knowledge is not passively gathered. Cognition is an adaptive process. Learning is a social activity. Learning is contextual. And now, let us talk about Dewey's contribution. Knowledge and ideas emerge only from a situation in which learners had to draw them out of experience that had meaning and importance to them. Dewey speaks of languages natural birth from life, as well as its feedback on forms of connected life, based on dramatic transformation such as the human interaction with the environment take on odd modes. In short, human experiences would be different if language did not exist. Experiences could not inflict everybody if we don't share this in order for them to know what happened to us. If language is not here, we are just walking without knowing anything. Schools did a big impact on what a professional have today. Instructional materials that mold the students to become competitive and good makes everyone strong when it comes to academics. Language with knowledge that we receive from our parents defines our attainments in life. PJ's contribution to discover or understand is to reconstruct by the rediscovery. And such condition must be complied with it in the future individuals are to be formed and who are capable of production and creativity and not simply repetition. Focuses on the interaction of experiences and ideas in the creation of new knowledge. Explores the importance of learning alongside with peers and how culture affects the accommodation and assimilation of knowledge. We are capable in doing things that helps us nourish ourselves. Discovering our talents and skills are taught first inside the house and enhanced in schools. Innovation within our hands are ways to create new learnings. Social interaction develops our confidence and still used as a tool to show everyone that we are capable of it. We explore our life through experiences we encounter. With language, we share this. 
these multidisciplinary approaches developed ourselves inside the classroom. We have gained so much things through constructivist learning and in teaching. We have discovered how a constructivist classroom became active and participative acquired by all students. And also, it teaches us to do learning by doing. We are not just learning from our lessons, but we are training ourselves to become dependent and competitive inside the classroom. These are our experiences. And constructivism teach us to analyze information within our own in research and in discovery. Thank you for listening. We, the reporters, were hoping that you have learned something from us. We are grateful to share this to you. Thank you and have a good day.